Want to know who are the best German generals from World War II? Wait no more and join us as we uncover their stories and find out why they earned such great fame. We have compiled a list of five German generals that we think were the best in their field. So let's start with number five on our list. Number five, Walter Model. Walter Model was a key supporter of Nazi ideology, joining the party as early as 1925. In 1938, he was promoted to the rank of Major General and was given command of the Four Army Corps, which took part in the 1939 invasion of Poland. He was then appointed as the General of the Ninth Army, which operated on the Eastern Front. His tactical expertise proved invaluable during the planning stages of the Battle of Kursk, a major German counteroffensive against the Soviet forces. Adolf Hitler began to lose faith in the older German generals of aristocratic backgrounds, turning instead to his trusted troubleshooter Walter Model. With his middle-class origins and unwavering loyalty to the Nazi cause, Model found himself increasingly favored by Hitler. He became known as Hitler's fireman. In 1944, Model was promoted to the rank of Field Marshal in recognition of his exemplary service and dedication. His appointment as Commander-in-Chief of the Western Front soon followed, when Field Marshal Gunther von Kluger was relieved from duty amid suspicions that he played a role in the July plot against Adolf Hitler. Model, however, was unable to stop the Allied advancements in France. In September of 1944, Army Group B, located in the Netherlands, was placed under the command of Model. In this position, he defended Arnhem against a British airborne attack, also known as Operation Market Garden, stopping the Allies from gaining an early route into Germany. The Battle of the Bulge at the end of 1944 was the last major battle for Model. After finding themselves surrounded in the Ruhr region of Germany, Model, commander of the retreating Army Group B, had no other option than to order his 300,000-strong army to lay down arms and surrender. In a desperate attempt to avoid capture, he committed suicide. Number 4. Gunther von Kluge Field Marshal Gunther von Kluge was one of Adolf Hitler's most accomplished generals in the Second World War, serving on the Eastern Front with distinction. He was appointed the commander of the 4th Army of the Wehrmacht in 1939 and led it during the invasion of Poland, achieving great success and earning himself a promotion to the rank of General Feldmarschall. He also oversaw the 4th Army during the Battle of France in 1940, before continuing to invade the Soviet Union during Operation Barbarossa. During the Soviet Union's devastating December 1941 counter-offensive, Field Marshal Fedor von Bock was replaced as commander of Army Group Center by von Kluger. However, his command ended abruptly in October 1943, when he was involved in a serious car accident. After a lengthy recovery, von Kluger was appointed to lead the German forces in the western occupied territories of France in July 1944, after taking over from his predecessor, Field Marshal Gert von Rundstedt, who had been removed from his post due to displaying a defeatist attitude. Although Kluger's forces attempted to stop the Allied advance, they were ultimately unsuccessful in halting their onslaught. With the relentless pressure of the Allied invasion of Normandy, Kluger recognized that there was no way the Germans could win the war in Western Europe. Kluger was not directly involved in the 20th July plot to assassinate Hitler, but was still heavily affected by its failure. On 19th of August 1944, shortly after he had been summoned to Berlin for a meeting with Adolf Hitler, Kluger tragically took his own life. Number 3. Erwin Rommel Erwin Rommel, a brilliant German military commander, earned the prestigious Paula Marit Medal for his exceptional achievements during World War I. At the start of World War II, Rommel was assigned the role of guarding Adolf Hitler's headquarters. In this capacity, he had direct access to the Führer himself and developed a close relationship with him. In early 1940, Rommel was given command of the 7th Panzer Division and led successful campaigns against Allied forces in the 1940 invasion of France. In February 1941, Rommel was appointed as the commander of German forces dispatched to North Africa to aid the quickly deteriorating Italian army in Libya. This marked the beginning of the period that would result in some of his greatest military triumphs. His leadership style earned him the nickname Der Wustenfuchs, the Desert Fox, and Hitler, highly impressed by his accomplishments, promoted him to the rank of Field Marshal. Rommel's successes were short-lived. At the end of 1942, his forces faced a decisive defeat in the Second Battle of El Alamein and had to retreat to the German bridgehead in Tunis. Rommel was ultimately recalled to Germany by order from Adolf Hitler in March of 1943, marking an end to the Desert Fox. As the War of Movement was his speciality, 
Rommel was charged with fortifying and defending the French coast of the English Channel against a potential Allied invasion in 1944. With great ingenuity, Rommel began erecting an array of coastal defense structures that included ingenious inventions such as anti-tank barriers. Rommel's experience in North Africa led him to believe that the only way to effectively defend the beaches was to prevent enemy forces from establishing a bridgehead. To achieve this goal, he proposed an ambitious plan for deploying reserves immediately behind coastal defense works, ready for counterattacks at any point. On July 17, 1944, Rommel's Khan was attacked by British fighter bombers during the midst of the Allied invasion of Normandy. As a result of the strike, Rommel's vehicle careened off the road and flipped over multiple times. This resulted in serious head trauma and he was hospitalized. Unfortunately, Rommel's name was mentioned in the 20th July plot to assassinate Hitler. As opposed to the swift execution that many of the other plotters faced, Hitler instead sought to take a more discreet approach with Rommel due to his esteemed status. He was presented with a difficult decision, commit suicide or face a trial that would result in his disgrace and execution. On October 14th, Rommel took his own life with a cyanide pill, sacrificing himself for the benefit of his family and reputation. He was given a full state funeral, where it was publicly declared that he had died from wounds sustained due to the bombardment of his car. Number 2. Heinz Guderian Guderian was a highly influential German military theorist and one of the main advocates of the Blitzkrieg strategy. His vision, which called for rapidly mobilized mobile forces to overwhelm an enemy through shock and speed, revolutionized modern warfare and heavily influenced the development of armored forces. After the conclusion of World War I, Guderian stayed with the German army and developed a keen interest in armored warfare. Guderian wrote his famous influential book Achtung Panzer, in which he set out to promote strategic mechanized warfare. Guderian was privileged to find an ally and an advocate in the form of Adolf Hitler, his commander-in-chief. In the autumn of 1938, Guderian was appointed as the commander of Germany's mobile forces, and he quickly put his theories to the test in the Polish campaign. His tactical expertise proved successful, leading to a quick German victory. In May 1940, Guderian spearheaded an even more daring offensive, pushing through France and driving the French army to the coast. In the Russian campaign, Guderian led his troops to the outskirts of Moscow in October 1941, before being forced to retreat. On 25th of December, Guderian was removed from his post due to his refusal to follow Hitler's order to stand fast and the conflict of opinion that had arisen between him and Kluger, who had recently taken over command of Army Group Center. In March 1943, Guderian returned as the Inspector General of Armor for the German Armed Forces. In this position, he had sweeping powers to prioritize the production of armored vehicles and decide upon their deployment in combat operations. On July 20, 1944, a group of conspirators made a daring attempt to assassinate Adolf Hitler. In the wake of this event, Guderian was appointed as acting chief of staff of the Wehrmacht. But on 28 March 1945, he was sent on leave after a failed attempt to launch an offensive against Soviet forces in the town of Kustryn in Poland. When World War II came to an end, he was taken into US custody. Despite being a key figure in Nazi Germany's war efforts, he was able to escape being declared a war criminal at the Nuremberg trials due to a lack of documentary evidence against him. Guderian was released in 1948. Number 1. Erich von Manstein Field Marshal Erich von Manstein was one of the most prominent German military commanders during World War II. He is remembered for his strategic brilliance and leadership, as well as for being among the most successful German generals to command in the war. He successfully spearheaded campaigns against Poland, France, and Russia. At the beginning of World War II, von Manstein served as Chief of Staff for General Gerd von Rundstedt during the invasion of Poland in 1939. It was then when he came up with the ambitious plan to attack France along a concentrated armored thrust through the Ardennes Forest. Von Manstein's daring plan was rejected by the German high command, but was brought to the attention of Adolf Hitler. After examination, the Führer immediately saw its potential and gave it his full support. In June 1940, Erich von Manstein was promoted to general after successfully leading an infantry corps in the assault against France. He was then assigned to lead the 56th Panzer Corps in the invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941. Under his command, the group nearly succeeded in capturing Leningrad. In September 1941, von Manstein was appointed to take command of the 11th Army on the Southern Front. In just one battle, the 11th Army was able to capture 430,000 Soviet prisoners. Manstein's forces also managed to withstand an aggressive counteroffensive by the Soviets in the winter, 
and he continued to lead his army in the capture of Sevastopol in July 1942. His leadership during this period resulted in von Manstein being given the rank of Field Marshal. Von Manstein almost achieved a major victory by coming to the aid of the 6th Army, which had been surrounded in Stalingrad in late 1942 and early 1943. He managed to regain control of Kharkov with a successful German counterattack in February of 1943, making it one of the most impressive victories for Germany during the war. After being driven into retreat, he was dismissed from his position by Hitler in March 1944. Following the war, he was arrested by the British and put on trial for war crimes. Though he was eventually acquitted of the most serious charges, his health deteriorated while in prison, prompting his release in 1953. He went on to advise the new West German government on the organization of a new army, the Bundeswehr. And here you have our list of what we think are five of the best German generals of World War II. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please leave a comment down below with your thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. Subscribe to the channel as an offering to the gods of the algorithm and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.